Good evening, my friends. Welcome to Good Shepherd New York. My name is Michael Rodzina, and I'm one of the pastors here. And this is a first of its kind event for us. This is our first live Zoom gathering. It's our first live gathering, I think, since the pandemic began, aside from the eights calls that we would do a couple times a day in the very beginning of the pandemic. And so there's a, a different kind of energy to this. It's pretty exciting. I know that one of the things that makes this moment sacred and special is that we're all taking time to be together and to focus on the themes of Advent, to experience God through these themes, and to hopefully be shaped by the story of Christ together. This evening, we acknowledge the beauty of gathering together and connecting with God and with each other. And we just began the week of uh, the first week of Advent, which is the week of hope. Now, some of you may not have grown up in traditions that celebrated the church here, the church calendar. The church calendar simply allows us to take seasons, to take time, and to dwell on particular parts of Jesus' story. The church calendar is rooted in the life of Christ. It's not a way just to tell the story, but it's a way for us to actually dwell in the story. Advent, Fleming Rutledge says, is the midnight of the Christian year. It's rife with dark and gritty themes. Now, I would like to make just a pastoral note. I know that this has been a hard year, and we're going to process, process some of that tonight. Uh, because of the pandemic has been uh, looming so large and so dark in our lives, I think as soon as the election uh, cycle turned the corner, we were all looking forward to the holidays or the holy days of Christmas. But Advent reminds us to slow down. You know, where the market might have us move to an artificial joy that papers over our pain, that helps us sort of numb or check out of the hard things of this year. Advent invites us to dwell there, to take time there. Robert Weber says, Advent spirituality is a time to meditate not on the actual birth of Christ. According to the tradition, we ought not sing Christmas carols until Christmas. For Advent's not a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus in the manger, but a time to long for the coming of the Savior. The appropriate sense of this season is captured in the pleading hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Advent comes alongside us during this season and says uh, that waiting is good, that wanting is good, that anticipating things through time is good, that the process, not just the final product, is indeed good. Just like God took time for the incarnation, so God now takes time in our lives. Time to heal, time to rescue, time to, to speak, and time to be with us. Advent is a way to be present to God, not in some abstract way or through simple ideas, but through rituals, through practices, we habituate ourselves to the goodness of these things that Advent says are good. So tonight we wait together, we long together, we yearn, even if it's painful, together. And this is what our tradition says is the best way to be human. And so Advent is, it's short, it's only four weeks long and it sort of delays the gratification of Christmas and prepares us for Christmas. And it's countercultural, and it's certainly is almost impossible to do alone. And so that's why we've created these evenings to join with each other and to lean into these themes and the story of Christ. Um, we need guidance for this. And tonight we have two amazing guides, Kate Gunger and Aaron Nequist. Both of them are dear friends of mine. They uh, live here in New York, are uh, parishioners at Good Shepherd. Uh, Aaron has written a book on the subject matter of uh, practice uh, and faith as practice. Um, Kate has studied and has earned her master's degree uh, in this subject matter as well. And they both will be guiding us tonight on a reflection into the past, into what is behind us as we think about Advent. Um, I also would like you to know they will both not be masked. And that's because uh, our families uh, are in a pod. We all play by the same rules. We all live here on campus. And uh, so we have a sort of pod, so that's why they are not masked together in case you were wondering. Um, and I just wanted to 
kind of make a note of that so that we can move on into the evening. And so I'd like to invite you to turn your heart and your mind to Kate and Aaron. Good evening, I'm Kate Gunger. I'm so glad that you are all here with us tonight. Um, we have loved doing these Wednesday nights. Um, we explore different contemplative practices. There's usually a lot of silence and prayer and we just really love and connect with these Wednesday nights. And so we're excited to try this out over Zoom with all of you. Thank you for being here. You are all welcome. Um, whatever your beliefs or your doubts, you are welcome here. So let's take a moment now to, to get comfortable, make yourself as comfortable as you can. And we take a deep breath. Throughout our time tonight, we will have some moments of silence and space. And I want to encourage you to lean into those silences and to see them as a gift because they can be a rich gift. We want you to receive whatever the Spirit has for you this evening. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on the Advent theme of watching. We want to see to pay attention to the beauty and also to the brokenness that is a part of our world. So we're gonna start with a Psalm reading. This is a responsive Psalm. Um, you can find it in your digital guide. We're going to ask that you remain muted. Um, anytime there's a response tonight, we will ask you to remain muted, but you feel free to speak on your end openly um, and know that we are all listening with our hearts <laughs> to each other. Um, but we're gonna response, Aaron's gonna respond, respond, and I'm gonna lead, and then I will open us with a prayer. <sighs> Let's take a deep breath before we get into the psalm. As we come to this moment, this time together, we all bring with us the events and the emotions of our day. Take a moment to just think about how you're feeling and what you're bringing to this space. You could be bringing tension or anxiety or exhaustion. Maybe you're coming here with joy, gratitude. Whatever it is that you're coming here with, just take a moment to acknowledge it. And now a reading from Psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Together. When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an enemy encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. 
Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do, do not, not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering. Knowing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives with us, if there's an expression of gratitude or concern for ourselves, our families, our friends and neighbors, our society, or our fragile planet, I invite you to offer your prayers now to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we trust that you hear our prayers. We wait for you, Lord, and we long to see your goodness and your mercy. Holy Spirit, we open our hearts and we open our minds to hear what you have to say to us tonight. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to introduce you all to my friend, Aaron Nequist, who's going to lead us in our exam room tonight. That's great. That's a very official transition. <laughs> okay. Um, it's so good to be with you all. Uh, I've been looking forward to this night to dive in. And like both Michael and Kate said, tonight is about watching. It's about noticing. It's about looking back over one of the craziest, weirdest, hardest, most difficult years uh, of many of our lives and to notice what brought us here. And uh, for this first night, we want to pay special attention to the losses of this last season, to the things that we have lost. And of course, we don't do this to dwell in it to uh, just feel miserable together. We do this to learn how to name our losses in God's presence so that we may release them and open up brand new space for new life to get itself born. And so in many ways, what we're doing tonight is beginning, you know, the words of that, the great Christmas song, let every heart prepare him room. Tonight is all about, um, preparing room for new life to get born. So we're going to do this through a historic practice. I'm going to move my microphone first. We're going to do this through a historic practice given to us by the Jesuits called the Examine. And if you have been a part of Wednesday nights in the past, we have done this many times. This is one of our uh, kind of anchor practices. And if you haven't, no problem, it's very simple, five steps. First, we invite the Holy Spirit to guide this time. An examine is not like a, a self-evaluation tool. 
And examine is prayer. It's an invitation into a conversation. So we begin by asking the Spirit to lead. Number two, we look back either over the last day or the last week, or in our case, we're going to look back over this pandemic season. But we're going to do it beginning with gratitude. Even in 2020, we're going to begin with what was right, with what was beautiful, with what we are thankful for. Step three, as we do this examine, we're going to begin noticing the things that pop that were losses from this season. Things that broke our hearts. Things we did not choose. But here they are. And we're going to notice during this time the emotions that surface as we name these losses. And we're not going to judge them as good or bad, but just notice them together. Step four, we're going to choose one of those losses and spend some time talking and listening to God about it. This is kind of the heart of the exam and experience. And then step five, we're going to release these losses, release this heartbreak into God's hands and uh, ask God to create the new life in us that it could be born in a way that we could never generate, but we can only make space for. So five steps. It's going to take about 15 minutes. I want to invite you to begin in your body. Would you put both feet on the floor, please? If you have anything in your hands, you can set it aside. You don't need your digital guide for this. I invite you to sit up in your chair if you're able. Um, not overly rigid or formal, but open. My spiritual director loves to say, when you pray, say to God with your body what you're saying with your heart and with your mind. So I want to invite you, whether this is about how you hold your hands or how you lift your head or bow your head or how you hold your body, say to God, I'm open. I'm here. I'm listening. Whatever it is, say to God with your body what you're saying with your heart. And let's begin with step one, inviting God's present spirit to lead this experience. God is already here. We don't need to convince God to show up or anything. God is with us as God is always with us. So I want to give us just one minute in our own words to invite God to lead these next 15 minutes. Holy Spirit, would you guide us? now in God's presence, let's move to step two and let's review this last season in gratitude. And because it's about nine months to review, that's a lot to jump into. So I'd love to invite us to do this in three parts, just a minute on each of the seasons. And so in God's presence, I invite you to think back to March when all this was beginning, when we were hearing news reports, where there was all sorts of uh, information, misinformation, questions, fears. What was going on in you in March? What was happening? What was, what was it like with your family, with your friends? What was going on in your job? Try to bring yourself back to that time.
And again, because this is step two, as we look back over the season, we begin by remembering what was good, what was beautiful, even about this crazy season. So I want to give us a full minute to look back over the spring, March, April, and May, and try to find as many beautiful moments, as many moments of connection, of joy, of goodness, reasons that you are deeply grateful, even in a very difficult season. Let's take the next minute to look back and notice. Holy Spirit, please guide us. Now let's continue and remember the summer, June, July, and August. What was it like to be you in that season? What what was possible now that the weather was warming up? Um, Did you get to see some people you hadn't seen in a while? What were the good, beautiful blessings of this summer? Holy Spirit, would you draw our attention? Would you bring our memory to those things that were good, that were full of life, that were gifts. Holy Spirit, would you guide us? Let's continue now to this fall, September, October, and November, and look back and try to notice the good moments, the beauty. Um, A season where some of the kids were going back to school, where some of life was beginning to return to normal a bit, but then as it's been getting colder, things have shifted. This was, of course, the election season, which was intense in so many ways. But again, we begin by noticing the good. Would you take one minute and notice the beauty, the, the good moments this fall that you have been deeply thankful to God for? Holy Spirit, would you guide us as we look back?
And now having reviewed this season in gratitude, we move on to step three, where we notice the losses. And there have been so many this year. And so I want to give us a full three minutes, which may feel like an eternity, or maybe you're feeling things stirring inside you or that will barely scratch the surface. But I want to give us three minutes to look back over the season, the spring, the summer, the fall, and just notice the losses of a season such as this. Notice the things you didn't choose, the disappointments, and then pay special attention to the emotions that accompany you as you notice these things. And don't judge them as bad or good or you missed it or you did. Just observe. Be kind. Um, be merciful to yourself. These next three minutes can be holy space of holy memory. But remember, you are not alone. First, we are doing this together. So you're a part of this community. But most importantly, the God who made you and loves you and has been with you every moment is with you in this time of examine. So these next three minutes are yours and God's together. Holy Spirit, would you guide us as we look back and notice the losses? And now in this tender place, we move to step four, where we ask God to draw our attention to one of these losses. It can be huge and life-changing, or it can be really small, 
Um, there's not a, a right or wrong loss. But what is God nudging you to focus your attention on in this moment? Try to be as specific as possible. And once you have it in mind, I invite you to open your hands like this. And imagine that you are holding something that represents that loss in your hands. And imagine the emotions that you are, uh, that have been raised by this loss are in your hands also. And I want to give us two minutes to talk to God about what you're holding. You don't have to inform God on the details. God knows. But would you share why you feel the way you feel? Would you open your heart even just a little bit and say, God, this is what this has felt like. These next two minutes are ours to tell God how you feel about this loss. Holy Spirit, would you receive these prayers? with our hands still open, this time to receive. I invite us to take a minute and now simply listen. What might God want to say in response to what you've just shared? Maybe God will surprise you in this moment. We don't generate this experience. We don't convince God to say anything. We simply and humbly hold space to listen. So let's take the next minute in humble, hopeful silence and let God say whatever God wants to say. Holy Spirit, please speak. Your servants are listening.
And finally, step five. Would you turn your hands over in a gesture of releasing this loss into God's mercy and strength? And with your hands open like this, would you take the next two minutes to ask God to help you carry it? And as you release more and more of the, the loss of the heartbreak, of the disappointment, would you ask God to keep creating more and more space for new life to get born in you, in your family, in your friends, in your community, in this country, and in the world. So let's take the next two minutes to ask God to carry this with us and then lead us into new life. God, would you lead us in this final part of the prayer? Finally, let's place both hands over our hearts, both the uh, literal, physical center of our being, but also the spiritual center. And let's close this part of the practice by praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And I'll pray a line, and then we can all join our voices together and pray that line. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day and forgive us our trespasses and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Just take a moment to 
be silent and come out of that beautiful practice. Spirit, thank you for being present with us. Amen. One of the losses that I know I am grieving and so many of us are grieving, um, especially right now, is that we're not able to worship in our physical communities. Um, it's really hard as we are looking and watching for signs of God moving and present in our world. We've been kind of forced to do that in different and fresh ways. And God is showing up. God is good, and we can see the goodness of the Lord. Um, I'd like for us to try something right now that might be a little uncomfortable, but just embrace it. If you can, I'd like us to set our Zoom view to gallery for a moment. Put as many of our faces on your screen as possible. And let's just take a moment. If you don't want to put your camera on, I understand. But um, if you can put your camera on, we would love to see your face. And let's just take a moment to look through and as you look through everyone's face, hold each other in prayer and love and gratitude. Let's take a moment to look through together. You can extend a hand if you want. God, I pray a blessing over every person who is present here with us right now. We thank you for the gift of connecting to each other and to you. We thank you for this time together. Amen. Our psalm from earlier ended with one of my all-time favorite verses. I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the, of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. As we leave this sacred space, I pray that we will all see the goodness of God in our world. This Advent, as we watch for signs of God, God's goodness, I want to leave you with this blessing. May you see the goodness of the Lord break through the darkness of this world. May the love of Christ turn your eyes towards that which brings forth life. As you watch with hope and longing, May your eyes be opened to see signs of the Holy Spirit 
creating, and present. May our God, Source, Sun, and Spirit be a beacon of warmth and belonging, beckoning, drawing you ever closer during these cold winter nights. And may you go now in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Aaron, do you have any announcements? Um, just want to say two things. Uh, first, thank you. That was so thank beautiful. Um, the first thing is one of the most brilliant parts of the examine is you can do this. You, can, you don't need us. Um, you don't need this beautiful space. You can do this examine tomorrow if you sensed God was stirring in you um, tonight. Uh, bring that back into your examine tomorrow and keep bringing and holding this reality and see what God does. So the first thing is you can do this. Um, the second thing is because Dave Campbell is literally the best cellist the world has ever known, um, we asked if he would just stay and play for a couple minutes. And so if you would love a couple more minutes of the holy space in this room, um, you're welcome to stay on. If you want to flip through and see your other sisters and brothers who are with you in this, um, we'll take a couple minutes in this way. But we hope to see you next Wednesday. Grace and peace, friends.